Greetings and salutations, everyone. I hope everyone is doing well today. Well, last Friday, I said I was going to do an Alien Monday. But I woke up and I was like, you know, I got some amazing Dogman encounters to share, so I'm going to share them instead. Well, today's Extraterrestrial Tuesday. Now, before I get into these accounts, I got a couple links I'd like to share. As you know, I rely on my Patreon, my PayPal, and my merch to help this channel continue to grow and go. Those links are in the description below. I also have a second channel for creepypasta, fan fiction, and scary voice acting. Stories that don't fit on this channel. Now, if that's anything that you're into, follow that link below and give them a listen. You may just like what you hear. And I've definitely taken enough of your time. Let's get on with these three extraterrestrial encounters. Shall we? Today's first extraterrestrial account. See, my mom grew up in Venezuela. My grandpas escaped there during the Civil War and, with their savings, bought a small farm and some property in the capital. Anyway, this all happened when she was eight or nine, so around 62, 63 at my grandparents' farm. Back then, radio was all the rage, and they had just bought a fancy new radio for the farm. It must have been 11 or 12 a.m., and Grandpa was sleeping, but my mom was up listening to the radio shows. It was kind of a hot night, so the balcony and most of the windows in the living room were open. She was starting to fall asleep, so she decided to call it a night and turn off the radio. She went to close the balcony window, and that's when she saw it. It was a small creature, just a little smaller than her, and it was hunched over behind a large sofa, just watching her. It had a very large, almond-shaped black eyes and grayish, leathery skin, with arms longer than its body. She said it kind of looked like a gorilla in a way its arms touched the floor. Obviously, she screamed at the top of her lungs. The creature seemed to panic and ran to grab her arm and pulled her towards the balcony. But she resisted long enough for my grandma and grandpa to arrive. The little guy let go of her arm and escaped through the balcony before my grandpa could reach it. My grandpa went out looking for the gray for better part of an hour, but he didn't find anything. They all slept in the same bed that night and they never left the windows open at night again. Now here's the kicker. I figured she had just made up the story. Back when I was a kid, I was really into aliens and the supernatural and I figured she just made it up to entertain me. But when I asked my grandma about it one night, she told me her side of the story and she gave me an almost perfect description of the little gray alien. My grandmother is also a very serious person, so I really doubt she would have told me something like that as a joke, even as a kid. Sadly, I could never get my grandfather's side of the story because he died soon after I was born. But it's a story I'll always remember because it really freaked me out as a kid. Today's second extraterrestrial count. This happened the summer of 2016. I was staying at my grandparents' house for a few weeks in the summer while my mom was on vacation. They live near Grand Junction, Colorado. Their house is by a large river and the whole area was a ton of trees, plant life, and animals. I was letting my dog out so it could go to the bathroom one night. There's hardly any lights around their property, so I grabbed a flashlight. My dog is outside for maybe a minute before I hear her start viciously growling and barking like I've never heard before. She's growled and barked at animals or people outside before, but this was more aggressive than I've ever heard. I started making my way towards my dog to investigate. I make it about halfway to my dog and then I freeze dead in my tracks. I'm pointing the flashlight in the direction she's facing and I see the most unsettling thing I have ever seen. At first I think I'm just imagining or tripping out, but 
There's no way of denying it was clear as day. It was about three to four feet tall, a rectangular figure, but with rounded edges. Imagine like a four foot tall Twinkie. It was this gross translucent tan flesh color, like the color of a naked mole rat. There was no apparent face or limbs, all I saw was a bunch of tentacle leg looking things protruding all the way down the front of it and the side of its body. The way it was moving was creepy. At first it was sort of gently rocking side to side and then I swear it started taunting my dog like running from one spot to another to mess with her. At this point I got too scared it would do something to my dog so I ran to her, snatched her up and booked it inside and locked the door. When I peeked back outside, the thing was gone. I didn't think anything has ever disturbed me as much. My body wouldn't stop shaking for 25 minutes. The most crazy part is the next day I told my aunt I saw a weird alien bug looking creature outside the night before. She said I've seen that weird stuff as well and proceeded to explain seeing the exact same thing I saw. Same color, same shape, lots of tentacle centipede looking appendages, and the icing on the cake for me was when she said it kept rocking side to side. I said, you're kidding me, that's exactly what I saw last night. We both got chills and flipped out because it confirmed it was not our imagination. Today's third and final Extraterrestrial Tuesday account. First, I'll state that I've never been interested in aliens or UFOs. I've always been pretty scared of the whole thing. I remember seeing signs when I was 12 and it literally terrified me for weeks. But I thought of it as a phenomenon, as science fiction, until I experienced something I presume most of you won't believe, and that's just fine. Right now, it's time for me to share this and get it out, because I've never shared it with anyone before. Three months ago, I was camping with a friend in a very remote part of Northern California. I'm a massive wilderness junkie. I've been camping all my life and spend much of my free time hiking, rock climbing, hunting, etc. A buddy of mine that also enjoys the outdoors wanted to head up to the Sierras for the weekend and asked me if I'd go with him. It was our second night and we were sitting up by the fire. We weren't staying at our campsite. We had hiked about 10 miles from our cars to a clearing with a beautiful view he had stayed at once before. It was around 10 p.m. and we ate some food and we were just checking out the stars. He was tired and went to sleep. I wanted to stay up for a while and about 45 minutes after he went to bed I saw this object coming up the valley below. It was basically flying saucer shape with multiple circular lights rotating on the edge that changed colors over and over. I was absolutely shocked. I watched it for maybe 15 seconds and decided to wake him up so he could see it and wouldn't think I was crazy. I stood and when I looked back towards it, the thing was gone. I called out his name and that's when everything got real crazy. I didn't hear my own voice when I called out, everything was completely silent. I could move my eyes around but couldn't move my body. I remember seeing the fire had completely frozen. Everything looked like a picture, like time had stopped or something. Then there was a flash of light and I blacked out. I woke up later just as the sun was starting to rise. I was outside laying in the dirt, shivering next to the fire that had long gone out. I felt like I had been drugged, totally in a haze. I sluggishly yelled out his name a couple of times and he came out of the tent. He was really confused, to say the least. I tried to explain what happened, but my memory was real foggy and I just couldn't articulate it. We left within 30 minutes. I was totally silent on the car ride back, falling in and out of sleep for seven hours. He dropped me off at my house and I passed out for basically an entire day. A few weeks later I was messing around with an amp and it released a static O oh sound when I unplugged my guitar. 
For some reason, this sound somehow triggered my memory and I remembered everything. When I came back into consciousness, I was suspended, laterally, in this circular mechanic weird position, very similar to da Vinci's Vitarian Man. These clear glass-like shackle-type restraints were holding me in place. I was completely nude, and standing above me were three of your typical greys. They were around four feet tall and were wearing white spandex-like suits. Two were just standing there, observing the other who was extracting blood from a vein under my armpit with this weird-looking syringe. Although they didn't show any real reaction, I could tell they were surprised that I was awake. I couldn't move at all except my eyes and lips. I was absolutely terrified in sort of a fight-or-flight mode. My heart pounded from the influx of adrenaline. I can't even begin to tell you how scared I was, but I also felt total rage. I wanted to kill them wanted to rip out of this device and completely destroy them. My brain went totally primal, just animal instinct, and I could just tell that they could sense my anger because they all stepped back simultaneously. I'm 6'3", 185, and I was hoping I looked as threatening as possible, which is silly because I was totally paralyzed and therefore completely harmless. Two of them disappeared from my view and presumably left the room, the other one just staring at me, void of emotion. I wanted so badly just to shut my eyes, but I forced myself to stare right back at it, trying my hardest not to blink. Then the two greys came back, and now they weren't alone. I honestly couldn't believe my eyes. Standing behind them were two very tall, very human-looking beings, a male and a female that look like Norris gods. They both had bright golden hair and massive eyes. The males were a dark blue and the females were violet. I suppose they are what the UFO community refers to as Nordics. This was quite bizarre to me. My family descended from Switzerland and I'm very Nordic looking. Blonde hair, blue eyes, the works. Now I know this is cliché, but I heard a feminine voice in my mind. For some reason, I could understand what she was telling me, although it wasn't like she was saying it in English. It's really hard to explain, but I just knew. She told me something like, Be calm, you are not in danger. I relaxed and asked her what they wanted with me. She said they were just checking up on me. I practically blacked out after hearing that. I asked her what she meant. She said that they had saved me when I first came into being. I immediately knew exactly what they were talking about. I was born practically two months premature. My mother was horribly sick during labor. We both had fevers of 104. The strange thing is, the doctors had absolutely no idea what was wrong with us. I was given two spinal taps, my mother was given three. I spent four nights in a bubble housing ICU thing. There was a decent chance I was going to die. Then one day I started getting better and made a full recovery. The doctors were very worried that the whole ordeal might have permanently damaged my body and possibly brain, but I was totally fine. I asked her, why did you save me? This time I heard a deep male voice stating that this is a conversation for a later time. I asked them if they were human, he said no. I was confused considering they both looked quite human. I asked him if man had come to them, he said yes. That they had come here 200,000 years ago and created mankind by com combining their DNA with our primate ancestors. I wanted to know why they looked especially similar to me more than other humans. He stated that many males of their kind find female humans attractive and mated with them. This directly passed on some of their physical features to the Nordic people. I wanted to know more, but they declined and said it was time for me to go back. I blacked out instantly and awoke 
up by the extinguished fire, clothes on and shivering. I understand this sounds absolutely ridiculous and very impossible, but it happened. I don't know what to do. I've completely lost sense of the encounter, but I already feel a bit relief after letting this story out. Well, three accounts of extraterrestrials on Tuesday. Extraterrestrial Tuesday. I hope you guys enjoyed these accounts. I know a lot of you probably aren't going to enjoy it because you're all dog man happy like myself. But, you know, I asked a while ago what you guys wanted, and a lot of you did say you wanted some extraterrestrial accounts. So I deliver. Now, tomorrow I'm going to have some more dog man, don't worry, and the next day some cryptids. I hope you guys are very happy, and if not, just listen anyway, and give me a thumbs down or a thumbs up, and, you know, tune in tomorrow. Anyway, guys, I bid you farewell. And I thank you for all your support.